Hi there grade 12s and welcome to today's video in which we are going to be focusing on the practical modules which you covered in term 1. That was Word and Excel and there was a bit of database as well. Um, Word was 3.1 to 3.3, Excel was 4.1 and 4.2 and then database should have been 5.1 at least. Okay, so um, I'm going to be going through that now and so let's look at what we covered this term. So the first thing was in module 3.1, let me just go to my data files over here. Um, in module 3.1, we covered reviewing documents. So we looked at things like tracking changes. So I want to open up portable computers over here. And here we see a typical example of a document where there have been, um, you know, changes made to this document. Now, how do I know that? Well, when I look at this document, I can see that. Um, if I click on these lines over here, this is how you'd generally get the document. You can then go up to review. You can go to the reviewing pane under tracking. Remember, this is where we deal with our uh, changes. And I can have a look at the list of changes that have been made to this document. Right? Sarah, uh, Sandra Jacobs over here deleted and smartphones. She deleted the word only, but I don't really see it here. So what I can do is I can... Well, I can leave that open. I can just click on the, the red bar on the side to show the tracked changes. And there you can see Sandra Jacobs inserted the word lower, right? So that it reads parts for lower power consumption. Now I can do a few things here. I can accept over here the changes or I can reject the changes. So let's go have a look at this. If I click on accept changes, I can accept and move on to the next, which will Allow me then to accept this change and move on to the next um, change that was made. Alternatively, I can accept all the changes that were made or accept all the changes and then stop the tracking of changes. So if I edit the, the document any further, I can also go and reject the changes. I can reject and move on to next. I can reject all and also reject changes and stop tracking. So let's see what they say to me. They want me to reject the insertion of the word hybrid. So over here we see Sandra inserted hybrid. Over there it says hybrid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that particular change. Now you'll see when I click on accept and reject, what happens? I've got another option that says just reject the change. So it just rejects that change, doesn't move me to the next, it just does that particular change. So I'm going to go reject change. And there you can see hybrid has been removed and it's been removed from the revisions over here right let's go and look at the next one sandra jacobs deleted the word about so let's see over there and yes i do actually want to accept this change and there we go it then makes the change okay so guys this is where we will go in to do our um, tracking of changes and then also to accept the changes um, and reject certain changes as well okay so um let's see let's go to grade 12 meeting i'm going to close this one let's go to grade 12 meeting and they want me to turn on track changes so at the moment if i do anything if i delete anything you can see Nothing happens, right? It's not tracking those changes. So what I've got to do, I've got to go to my review tab. What am I going to do now? I'm going to go to the tracking group and I'm going to click on track changes. And you can see once I do that, if I now take an A out here, you see what happens on the left hand side over there, right? So I do this. I'm going to go to projects here. I'm going to delete a couple of things there. I'm going to add in some words over the or some letters over there and then I'm going to save this and I'm going to save it onto my desktop so you can see what it looks like right so there I have it I close this document I'm going to close everything down and there's my grade 12 meeting I'm going to open it and that's what I see when I or that that's what the person will see um, who is receiving this document you can see there's a change there's a change and they can then go in and they can say, well, okay, um, you know what? I like all these changes. I'm going to accept all these changes. And there you can see it's done. All right. So that's as much as we really need to know 
um, for our tracking changes. Let me just see if we've covered everything. Yeah, we can show comments, ink insertions. We've got advanced options as well in terms of how we want things tracked when it comes to comments. We can put a particular color in there. We can track moves um, with a double strike through. There's a lot of different options, but just know where to go to do your track changes. You can also change the username. Um, and that would be the person who's making the changes. So if you change that, that's what it will do. All right. So that basically covered uh, 3.1. From there, we now go to module 3.2. So module 3.2 dealt with hyperlinks, um, bookmarks, and cross-referencing. Right. Also touched on manipulating line and page breaks. So let's go and open up a document and see what we can do. And I'm going to open up, uh, let's see, diabetes over here because it's got a lot of things in it over there. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is look at uh, our insert tab. And this is what we're going to be looking at, our hyperlink, bookmark, and cross-referencing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if there are any bookmarks here. I'm going to click on home. I'm going to go to find, sorry, replace. And I'm going to go to go to, let me just close that. And there you can see I've got a number of bookmarks. I've just got two bookmarks on or in this document. So I'm going to click on this heading. I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to click on bookmark because that's what I want bookmarked. And I'm going to say understand. And then I'm going to click add. Now it looks like nothing's been done, right? Until I go to bookmark again, and now you can see, there it shows me my new bookmark. So I can go through the document and add a couple of bookmarks. Let's say I'm going to add a bookmark to exercise over here. And I'm going to call it exercise. I'm going to add it, and that's fine. And that's, that's how I add bookmarks. Okay. So bookmarks, we've ticked that off, we've done that. That's fine. Then we go to the top of our document, and we're now going to insert a hyperlink. So again, insert tab hyperlink and remember we have a number of options for this one I'm just going to go place in the document and you can see the headings that we have in the document and the bookmarks so you can go and click on any one you want to wherever they are directing you to I'm going to click on that heading click OK and you'll see it looks like nothing happened why because I didn't highlight anything so I'm going to highlight this word click on hyperlink place in the document same heading and click OK and do you see how that changes and when I press down on the control um, key on my keyboard and I click on that, it will take me to the particular heading. Okay, so guys, we've, we, we have our hyperlink, we have our bookmark. Now let's look at cross-referencing and I want to go to a particular example that you had in your textbook. So let me just close this and they want me to open the document, Contributions School Paper. All right, now they say to us, that they want us to create a hyperlink from the word competition on page two. So we go to page two. We're looking for the word competition. There it's highlighted. They want us to insert a hyperlink from this page to the bookmark example competition. So hyperlink in this document to the bookmark example competition and click OK. So that's done. However, they also say the screen tip must display the words example. So there's something we didn't do, right? So I'm going to highlight it again. I'm going to go hyperlink, place in this document, bookmark. And there we go, guys, screen tip, right? So what do they want in the screen tip text? I must say an example. Click OK. OK again. And you can see there when I move the mouse pointer over, it now says an example all right now let's see what else they want us to do they want us to replace the arrows over here um, sorry the ones highlighted in blue with a cross reference to the heading appendix so we're going to highlight that we're going to go cross reference what are we um, cross referencing to what are we doing they're saying to us Replace the arrows highlighted in blue with a cross-reference to the heading Appendix Article Submission Form. And we're looking for Article Submission Form. There we go. Appendix Article Submission Form. 
and let this heading text replace right so insert that insert reference to all that is fine and we click on insert and there you can see my cross reference has now been created okay so again when i press control and i click on that it will take me directly to that item so guys this is your hyperlink your bookmark and your cross reference and that was from um, module 3.2 okay don't forget your line and page breaks as well they just mentioned a few things on that then 3.3 dealt with um, mail merge okay so i'm going to go through a mail merge uh, let me see an example that they've given us here let's use a spreadsheet learners okay so we have that and they want us to deal with them going on tour um, so they want me to use the document letter All right so i'm going to use the document letter and what do they want me to do they want me to create a letter that must go out to all the parents so in order to start our mail merge and i don't think it's this one because in fact let me let me just use this one over here yeah here we go okay now you can see already they've highlighted what needs to be replaced okay so i'm going to go to mailings i'm going to go to start mail merge i'm going to go to letters because they've told me they want it to be a letter select recipients will always use an existing list so i'm going to click on that and then i'm going to navigate to um, the file that they've told me to go and get in this case it was 3.2 oh, sorry 3.2 3.3 and it was art festival participants there you can see it's showing me the tables that are in the database i click ok and it seems like nothing happens but i've selected my recipients now Please, before you go and insert merge field, they will usually ask you to edit the recipient list. And it's in this section where you can go and modify the way things um, are actually going to you know, play out. So I can go and sort um, these records. I can apply a filter to these records. I can go and find duplicates, if there are any duplicates. And I can even take out certain individuals' names if I don't want those people there. Remember, we just want to know where to go and do, do this because we follow the instructions from the question paper. So I'm just going to click OK. And then I'm going to click on School because now we're going to begin to insert our merge field. Right? Insert merge field and I'm going to go down to School. And then I delete the other one. I'm going to go to Name, Insert Merge Field, Name. Again, delete the other one because otherwise it just stays there. And insert merge field surname. So now I've done that. Started my mail merge, selected the recipients, edited it. I've inserted the merge fields. I'm previewing it just to make sure everything looks good. And then I finish and merge, edit individual, merge all records, and click OK. And now I'm sitting with a document that's moved from one page to nine pages usually now what they will ask you to do is to save it as another name um, so once you do that then you get those marks as well all right so that's about it for the mail merge yeah I think that's it okay so now we move on to uh, module 4.1 where we deal with microsoft excel Okay, our old friend Excel. Let me just get to these modules over here. And that is 4.1. Okay, so 4.1, first of all, it just ran through a lot of the um, general formulas and functions that we have, guys. So just the normal things that are there. Please do go through those activities. Um, they do mention just a few like your round, round up, round down, but just go through those formulas. Um, it's a lot of it is just revision from last year. I think most of us will still remember things like count, count A, and count blank. Remember, count counts the number of items in a cell. 
or cells that have things in them, right? So they've got numbers. I'm going to take that one out. And if I go equals count, open my bracket, highlight my range, you'll see it gives me a number seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight, but it only counts the cells that have uh, numbers in them. If I go equals count A, same range. You can see it gives me the same number because count A counts letters and numbers. No letters over there. However, if I put a letter in there, you'll see that count A changes. Right? Then if I use count blank, this will count the number of blank cells in a range. And there's only one of them. Okay, the others are like min, max, large, small. These are things we did do in, in grade 11. Um, so please do go through that. The other one was uh, really dates and time. Now, with dates and time, uh, let me just delete this. We know we have our functions for time and dates. And we have equals now. And we have equals today. And you can see what the two do. Equals now gives me the current date and time. And like you can see, I'm sitting at school after three in the afternoon. This one only gives me the date. Okay. Now, I'm going to use two dates. And I'm going to say the 10th of January uh, 2019. And I'm going to say over here the... 15th of March 2020 okay so there's two dates now one of the things they want us to do is to use the date functions and the date functions are things like let me actually just move over here a little bit um, day month year uh, and days okay so what are we going to do with this? Well, let's go and find out. If we go equals day, I open my bracket and I click on that cell and I hit enter. It gives me the day, which is the 10th. So it takes from this date only the day. You can already work out if I use month, it's going to give me the month, the first month of the year. If I use year, what is it going to do? It's going to give me the year 2019 so that's what those formulas do but what days does is i've got to put in the difference basically between two dates so now i go equals days open my bracket i click on my start date my sorry my my end date and i go to my start date and it'll work out that there is a difference of 430 days between those dates all right let's change this to 2021 and you can see it updates so between 2021 and uh, the 15th of march 2020 there was a difference of 301 days okay so guys please uh, do know that you will get asked questions like that as well all right then we've also got time okay we we'll also deal with time so i think there is an exercise that i'm going to open up on time and we're going to go with practice times okay so this is important when you deal with practice times you can see here we've got a start time a finish time and the time per day so they want us to work out how many hours um you know the person has practiced and then the total number of hours so obviously here we're going to put in a sum okay so that's fine but how are we going to work this up well we're literally going to say one cell minus the other okay we've taken the larger time we've subtracted that from the smaller one and what has it given us 130 we know that should be the answer because it's an hour and a half but we need to display this 1.5 so what are we going to do? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to our format section or our home and our format section under number. And we're going to change that back to a normal number. Now it looks totally different. Reason being, 
is that we have to multiply whatever this answer is by 24. And why is that? Because there are 24 hours in a day. And you see how, the, how it changes? Take those zeros away and I'm sitting with 1,5. Now I can do the same for the rest. And there you can see there's my answer now. I can just do a sum. Total number of hours practiced 10,5 hours. Okay, this is something that does come up from time to time. So please just know um, how to deal with that. Okay, also on um, the, okay, also on time, we have hour, minute, and second, right? So remember with our dates, we had day, month, year. Let's, let's go and have a look at how this works. You can see there the hour, 16. Our equals minute is zero and our equals second will probably return zero to us as well because we don't have you know a number like that so let's dip me play around with this if I go 16 oh five 23 there we go you can see it's 16 oh five 23 16 hours five minutes and 23 seconds okay so there's the formula over there guys uh hour minute and second right so now we move over to module 4.2 and we're dealing here primarily with our if functions now let's just go here 4.2 and we're dealing with our if functions and then VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP as well, right? We've also got our nested if functions. So let's go through this nice and slowly to make sure that you understand this. And there's a very easy way to make sure that you can get things sorted. So we're going to go to WOOF. And what do they want? First thing they want from us is uh, an analysis of the various breeds entered now has to be done in column j column j over here they uh, are looking for entries determine in column j how many entries there are for each breed now i've got to go get the number of alsatians i've got to check for it over here and then do a count right so i'm going to do a count if so the way i'm going to do it is go formulas insert function and i'm going to pull up a count if and where do i want to go and look for this this is going to be my range under breed what am i looking for i'm looking for alsatian I hope i'm spelling it correct right click ok and there it shows me five so this is how i do my count if formula all right um let's see what else do they want in column k how many dogs in each breed are older than four years old so again i'm gonna go insert function i'm gonna go count if and what is my range the age all right and my criteria is going to be older than four so i'm going to go greater than four and you can see there are 13 that are greater than four i can scroll that or just auto fold that down and there we go guys so this is my count if please if I, if you've got to do a a sum if you're going to use the same formula if, well not the same formula but the same um principle insert function and this time instead of count if i go sum if i choose a range well i want to let's say for example take the number of oh, the, the breeds over here my criteria is going to be let's say spaniel and my sum range this is the range that i'm going to highlight 
um, of what I want to add. So let's say I want to add all the ages of those dogs which are Spaniels. Then I'll go and highlight this over here. And you'll see there it already gives me my answer is 18. So what it's done is it's looked at the breeds. I wanted to count all the ages of the Spaniel breed dogs. There's it. Some if. It looked at the range. It looked at the criteria. And then the sum range. What do I want to add to that? All right. So that is our count if and our sum if. We also have our nested if. Okay. This is something that has come up before. This is an if statement inside an if statement. All right. For this one, we are going to have to type this out. But let's have a look at what we can do. So our if statement over here says this individual got 54 marks. Right. And they want us to display the correct message for the mark obtained if the person hit 75 to 100, 50 to 74, or 0 to 49. Okay. So I'm going to go insert, sorry, formulas, insert function, and I'm going to go with my if statement. Okay, so now I'm going to, I'm just going to type out my formula because I don't have a nested if over here. So I'm going to go equals if, open my bracket. And the first thing I need to look at is, well, what, what am I, what am I looking at? What, what, what cell am I dealing with? So I'm dealing with B2, right? If in cell B2, what happens? If in cell B2, the number is... Less than, sorry, let's start with the first one. If it is greater than 74, then what must happen? It must show the word pass. Right? Put in my semicolon again, and now I begin again. If, open my bracket, the same cell, B2. Okay, so let's let's begin with the if statement. Equals if open bracket, and I'm going to say if cell B2 is greater than, so whatever number is in B2, if it's greater than 74, what must happen? It must display the word distinction. Okay, then I put in my semicolon again, and I start my if statement again. If open bracket... Uh, whatever is in B2 is um, greater than or equal to 50. What must happen? It must display the word pass. And if none of those work out, then it must display the word fail. Now, there you can see it's displaying pass. Why? Because the number is between 50 and 74. So let's say I change that to 85. It will now display distinction. All right. So guys, please practice your nested if. Let's go with this one over here. Equals if. Open my bracket. If whatever is in cell, what's that? B7 is greater than 69. Then it needs to display an A. Semicolon. If, open bracket, uh, what I say, B7 is greater than or equal to 50, then it needs to display B. Anything else, it must display C. All right, there we go. There's displaying C. If I change it to 68, you can see how it changes. One thing I do want to say is just be careful with the numbers um, when you're putting in the, the greater than or less than or equal to. Um, just be careful on that. Okay. Then our last two items we're looking at 
is the VLOOKUP and the HLOOKUP. So let me just get an example here for you. And we're going to go with Books Outstanding. That's, that's the typical one that, that generally comes up. Um, and I want to get one that deals with HLOOKUP. Not sure if they gave us one. All right. All right. I will, I will have a look. Okay. So let's go. Now, we can see we've got our school over here. We've got a book code. We don't have the subject and we don't have the cost. When we go to the cost sheet over here, we've got the book code, subject and cost. Okay. Now, the difference between the VLOOKUP and your HLOOKUP is quite simple. The V stands for vertical and the H stands for horizontal. So the V lookup is going to have a look at things vertically. The horizontal is going to look at things across this way. So I'm going to open up another sheet so I can actually do things this way. I just want to get a couple of things across. I'm just going to use one example. And let's see. Yeah, let's take it that way. Okay. Well, we will come back to that. So for now, we want to work out the subject. Um, they don't give us anything else. So we need to put up a put in a VLOOKUP function. So I'm going to go to my formulas, insert function. I'm going to go look for a VLOOKUP. Once I find that, it's going to ask me for the lookup value. In other words, what do I have over here that should correspond to this section? And I've got the book code, right? So I'm going to make sure I clicked in lookup value. I click on that first lookup uh, code or lookup value. Then I click in table array and with table array I'm now going to go to the table where the subject and cost is listed. So I'm going to click on cost and then I've got to highlight this whole section over here. Okay, I've got to highlight all of those things. Then it's asking me for the column index number. So the column index number is, well in this range, which column are you looking at? Which info do I want? What do I want? If I go to sheet, uh, I want the subject. So I go back here. Please don't forget to delete these things out of the column index number. If it's there, you must only put a number. Column 1, column 2 or column 3. It's going to be column 2 because that's the info that I want. And you can see my answer is already here. And then they ask me with um, my range lookup, um, am I going to be putting in true or false? True is if we um, are going to omit anything, but false is where we want an exact match. And I type in false and I click OK and I get economics. Let's do cost. OK, insert function, VLOOKUP. That is my lookup value. I can now use any one of them, by the way. Go to my table array, go to cost. I'm going to go and highlight again this whole section over here. Column index number, it's now column three. And I'm going to type in false, hit enter, and there is what I want. I got my economics and I got my cost by using a VLOOKUP. So let's go and get the next one by using an HLOOKUP. Insert HLOOKUP. That is going to be my lookup value. My table array is going to be this section over here. Right? Remember, that's what I created. And you can see it's not one next to the other. It's one under the other. So I'm dealing with rows now. My row index number is, well, I want that information from the second row. So I'm going to type in the number 2. My range lookup. Okay, and I'm going to just indicate false because I want an exact match. Click OK. And there's my answer. Let's go and do another one. I want the cost for that book code. Insert function HLOOKUP. That's my lookup value. My table array is the range that I'm going to go and look through. 
The row number is now row number three. My range lookup is false because I want an exact match. Click OK. And there we go. And guys, that's our um, H lookup and our V lookup. And that covers all our practical modules for term one. Good luck.